Welcome back. Over the past few weeks I teared down a two commercial SDSL2 ISDN plus Ethernet boxes and these two <laughs> dead power bricks are a leftover of those teared outs. Uh, card here, link in the description. Anyway, I thought it would be a nice idea to have a look into these two power bricks too, because there is at least 15 years of technology advancement between them. Enjoy! The first thing you note is that this older brick is obviously larger than the newer brick here and that's true for all dimensions. However, the larger block made by Meanwell, a reputable manufacturer of power supplies, yeah, made in Taiwan, puts out 48 volts at 1.375 amps, so 66 watts. While the Fihong, made in China, puts out 12 volts at 4.2 amps, and that's about 50 watts, uh, 50.4 if you want to be exact. Now, if you take the more or less <laughs> exact measurements of both in all three dimensions and multiply them to get to the volume in liters and then divide their power output by the volume you get to a power density. And you see the smaller and newer brick has a power density of 174 watts per liter while the older one is tugging along at 141 watts per liter. So over time the power density of those power bricks has definitely increased. Yeah, yeah, I know. Stop talking. Take them apart. Let's start with the mean well. If I... <laughs> and it has screws. Okay, so that's the difference. I'm pretty sure that <clears throat> the newer model from Fihong will not feature any screws and these look like security screws or something. But I hope we can... Or maybe just hex? Ah, let me see. Okay, Torx, simple Torx should work on that thing. Let's see, yeah. Something is giving way inside there. That doesn't sound too good. I thought maybe we can save the case, but uh, I think something already broke. And we get it apart. And you see that post, it broke off. And this is a polycarbonate case from, well, I guess 2003, January 2003. So not that old. Hmm. Now look at that. By the way, that's the start that broke off when I tried to <laughs> unscrew the screws. But yeah, the distance holders here in the case and <laughs> that thing is mounted basically in its own closed, yeah, almost closed aluminum chassis. Wow. And it has all the bells and whistles you would expect. So AC in is here and then we have a choke on mains earth, okay? And of course we have a common mode choke here and one, two, three filter capacitors and one, two, three morphs. And there is a smaller cap down here, also electrolytic. Maybe that's for the low voltage side. And we have the big, that's 400 volts electrolytic capacitor. And of course here, the bridge rectifier. 
and then another inductor here and at the side just here is the probably MOSFET switching the primary of our rather large transformer and it's all controlled by that little board. On the low voltage side we have that thing that's probably a rectifier diode and more capacitors and more inductors for filtering and yeah you 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 can't see it from that perspective uh give me a second there under the bracket is the opto isolator giving feedback from the secondary side to the primary high voltage side and there's even an isolation slot Let's try to get that board out. By the way, the electrolytic on the primary side is 105 degrees C, 150 microfarads, 400 volts. To get the board out, we probably have to loosen four more screws. Not of the self-tapping type, real screws. And that bracket here is, yeah, the, its only function is to give <clears throat> more mechanical stability to the transformer. <laughs> Let's see if we can lift that out now. Yeah, no problems at all. Here's your aluminum chassis, at least, yeah, one U and uh, it even has some isolation material here to keep the back of the board safe. Let's have a look. So that's all the primary side with the mains AC input here and then we have that big isolation area here with an isolation slot and uh, below that where it's dark that's the optocoupler uh, giving feedback from the primary side to the secondary side and otherwise there are only a few small resistors here, a small capacitor here, a diode there. Yeah, nothing to write home about. Let's see if we can unscrew the heat sinks. Again, real screws, no self-tapping. And okay, they are soldered on, but I can, yeah, bend them to one side. Uh, maybe we have a look at uh, the type of that rectifier here in a second. But first we unscrew the other heatsink. I'm pretty sure when they put it together, they first screw on the uh, switching transistor and the rectifier and then they solder everything in. Yeah, there's our rectifier and some more isolation material for the controller board. Another nice detail has revealed itself. So we have here a fuse and we have, an, that's probably an NTC to limit the inrush coming. The MOSFET is a Mitsubishi FS10KM-14A. That's a 700 volt 10 amps MOSFET with an RDS on of typical 1 ohm maximum 1.3 ohms. I mean, 1 ohm RDS on by today's standards is a lot. And that's why you need all that heat sinking. The rectifier is a Nihon F10P40F. This uh, obviously contains two diodes, uh, each good for 400 volts and 11 amps RMS with a forward voltage of 1.25 volts, uh, but ultra fast recovery. But a forward voltage of 1.25 volts is also a wee bit high by today's standards. 
The controller is a UC3843A from Onitrode, uh, later bought by Texas Instruments, but that type of controller was also produced by other manufacturers. It's just a current mode PWM controller. Now for the Fion, and I think I, yeah, found some holes here, maybe also screws. That would be astounding. Yeah, there's a screw. Oh, you cannot see it, but uh, believe me, there is a screw. There are two screws. And the label comes off in one piece and is of really good quality. So it had two screws, but I have no idea how the rest is supposed to open. Okay, that's maybe a little, little bit of an overkill, but... Okay, there was one snap. And there was another snap. Okay, snap ends at the back and two screws at the front. And we got that thing out too. So, uh, yeah, oh, I'll zoom down what kind of material that case is. Oh, it says here, uh, polycarbonate and ABS. And we have a two distance studs here because yeah, only two screws. And the interesting thing is they implemented some distance holding here or shielding, I'm not sure. With the second PCB, they just soldered here on at two points. Hmm. Otherwise we have almost the same <laughs> <laughs> the same architecture. So mains AC in. Uh, this time we can see the fuse right away and the NTC. We have one, two filter capacitors and one, two MOFs and one common mode choke. There is a third morph here and a fourth and a fifth here, but uh, these might be um, capacitors, not morphs. We have our big electrolytic here after the bridge rectifier. We have a controller board. We have a MOSFET for switching the transformer. And we have here a rectifier and the low voltage electrolytics and inductors for filtering the output. I couldn't be bothered to break the soldering iron out to desolder that. I just ripped it off, which was non-destructive more or less. And it's really just a big ground plane. If it's uh, yeah, mains ground or DC ground, uh, your guess is as good as mine. We have here a little three pin package. We have here the, uh, so we are here at the low voltage secondary side, a nice big isolation area, an isolation slot here. If we look at the other side, I'm sure there is an optocoupler for feedback to the primary side. And as I said, uh, some resistors, a diode, and that little a three pin package here, which is not really labeled. Uh, on the side it says SHR1. I have no idea. If you have an idea, leave a comment. But at least I found the optocoupler that is two of them, PC1 and PC2, uh, that go over that isolation area and provide feedback from the low voltage side to the high voltage side. By the way, these two electrolytics on the low voltage side filter capacitors, 
uh, they look a wee bit bloated. The big filter capacitor on the primary side is from the same vendor like in the other power brick, uh, 120 microfarads, 400 volts and also rated for 105 degrees. Now let's see if we can get the heat sinks off and have a look at the rectifier and the switching MOSFET. Okay, this will be destructive. No, not as destructive as I thought. There we have number one. And there goes number two. And we also get hopefully a good look afterwards on the controller board. There are two chips on it. So our switching MOSFET is a 2SK2996. 600 volts, 10 amps with an RDS on of typical 0.74 ohms, one ohm max. <clears throat> Please note that's a good 25% less than the switching MOSFET in the previous break. And the rectifier, yeah, two diodes in one package again, is either a DF20GC10 or an SF20GC10. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. They are both 100 volts, 20 amps, Schottky diodes. And the forward voltage is 0.86 volts. Compare that to the forward voltage of 1.25 volts and this is almost a third less than in the previous brick. And that's also the answer how you can <laughs> create a higher power density per volume. Just use parts, okay, newer parts, this is about 10, 20 years younger, uh, and have less losses, so less heat to dissipate. There is really only one chip on the controller board. The second large package was um, yeah, another tranny or something. There's a smaller one. And the controller itself, it's an STL5991D. Yeah, well, of course, a current mode PWM controller like in the other brick. And that's it for today. Till next time. Bye.